Hey everybody and welcome on back to Minecraft. Today we are here in Minecraft 1.14 and I am so excited for today's projects. Before we jump into those, the last few episodes we have been working on linking up our quarry build over in this area to the rest of the world by building up this awesome bridge area we were just walking across, as well as last episode we brought the roadway in here to really physically connect this area in and as all this stuff loads in, I think my render distance is down here. Yeah, it's down there a little too far because I was working on some other things. And we should see the mountains starting to pop up there in the background. And oh my gosh, this view from right here with everything like this loading in and when the mountains start to get all the way up there is so awesome. With this dark oak forest we have down here, we're able to cram so much life into here without actually doing too much work to it. Just using our classic Minecraft notch dark oak trees, we're able to get a bunch of stuff in there and our mountains are looking pretty freaking epic in the background. And up here we are finally connected all the way into our quarry area. Beyond that we did a bit of extra work around this area, working on a new custom cave area which we might visit later today if we have the time. But now if we fly off into the wonderful, wonderful Minecraft 1.14 chunk loading system and land right here on our world map, which I gotta say is looking pretty freaking epic at this point. We have our desert city down here. We got Bleak Rock all the way over here with its big farmland region. And that road comes all the way here into our port city with our canal area cut out and kind of lining up what everything here is going to be looking like. You can see this loose line going right along there. That is actually going to be the end walls. Basically, this wall right here is going to go all the way around over there to the water. We'll have another castle over here. And then we'll bring the wall probably along this tree line as well right across there. And I'm super pumped for that way down the road. However, today... This area right here is grabbing my attention because I want to take this farmland region, which I'm hoping to eventually stretch all the way around here, basically all the way up in this vicinity, and I want to start bringing it out throughout here. So basically we can take this central area right there, add in a big old field. I don't think we're going to add too many houses into this area for today's episode. At least we might leave a few spots where we can throw a few in. And beyond that, I do want to see if we can figure out a way to get some automated carrot and potato pro production going today. There's going to be a lot of different projects going on here and there, but I'm thinking we hide behind these walls back here and throw in a few tiny redstone farms to automate that stuff so we can like AFK in this vicinity or while we're working on building up the fields, we can get some of that automated stuff going along back there but before we do that let's get these fields lined out here and i'm thinking we get an eye up there in the sky so we can quickly see everything going on with this and i'll be right back with y'all and now it's time to line out all of these crop fields i am really really happy with the end result of this one it gives so much more life into this vicinity i feel like finally we have this area so much more like attached into the, what the rest of the world is i felt like before the farmland just kind of randomly was cut off there and there was just randomly it stopped and now we at least have it continuing all the way over to the river, so it feels so much more complete using that river as a sort of a landmark here to really define what area of farmland we currently are. Eventually, we're going to be expanding across the river as well, but for now, I'm just focusing on getting this done because we have so many different fields in here. We're going to use so many different types of crops, so many different things here, and there's just so freaking much that we can do in this game now between wheat fields, carrot fields, potato fields, using the lilac as like a lavender bush. We can use some peonies. We can use sunflower fields. There's so many different field options that we have in the game, and I am so excited to be able to bring all of those back into this area again. Even taking a look at everything from up above here, these are going to be some freaking massive fields. I know from that eye in the sky view is a little difficult to see kind of the scale of everything going on in here, but these are going to be really, really epic. We have a lot of work doing to do in here to smooth out everything, make sure all of the terrain here is working well for us and all of that stuff along the way. But I think first we'll get the walls up for the fields, at least for most of them, where we don't have to do too much terraforming. Then we'll jump inside those caves and do those automatic redstoney farms. Then we can come back out and while I'm waiting for those resources to populate in the farms, we can watch everything here and smooth out all the terrain and all that good stuff. Anyways, where is my ender chest? I think that is right over here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. What we're going to be using for all of these different ones is quite a few different blocks. If we take a look at this guy right over here, we got stone, we got cobblestone, we got andesite, and we're going to bring in a tiny, tiny bit of diorite as well as some mossy stone, the good old mossy, mossy stone. What I typically like to do for these is bring in just the cobblestone to begin with. So we're going to grab up a whole bunch of this junk right here. And let's go ahead and start from this point right here. If we get these guys out and bring that cobblestone all the way down to the base we can get a much much better look at this one and what i like to do is build these from the outside so on the inside animals if they pathfind their way into here they could kind of jump their way out and be no problem 
However, from the outside, we want to make sure that they cannot get inside. Some easy ways we can do that is a slab right there, a block right up like this, and then we just kind of bl bring this across randomly throughout, making it look very, very spiky. There are some, some high points, some low points, some very weird, awkward, like large, large ones like this, and then bringing that all the way down here. I think this wall design here is going to be freaking amazing in 1.14 now that we can bring in those stone slabs and site slabs and everything like that. Because so we look at these farm design or the wall design at our old one over here, it's cobblestone across the top going everywhere unless we use a full block of stone or a full block and a site. So now that we can throw those in as the slabs and stairs across the top, this thing is going to look so freaking epic, I think, or I hope. <laughs> we'll see how all that works out here in the end. But basically, the idea is to go around these things all the way like this, creating kind of that rolling wall pattern going woo up and down and up and down and all the way back like that. Alrighty, from up here, this is looking about 10 times more epic. The epic level is approaching 100%. And I'm very, very happy with this one. We obviously, we still need to detail out all the walls and everything in here. Those guys have their rough outlines in here and we need to plant all of our crops and everything and all that good stuff. And the fact that these sunflowers are growing right in here and that they face that way, I was thinking that could be an awesome spot to do a freaking giant sunflower field. Filling that whole area with a bunch of sunflowers is gonna be so epic. I think that would bring us up to 120%. I'm trying to find some torches here. And there we go, cool. All right, so what we're gonna be working on next, just to take a bit of a break from this one, is we're actually gonna be doing a bit of villager work. Today, I want to set up an automatic carrot an automatic potato farm and we're going to be using the classic little like 16 by 16 farming square of where they farm everything and then you have the hopper minecart in the middle and this design that i'm actually using is done by one of my buddies silent whisperer uh, i'll leave a link to his video here down in the description and we need to get in here and place these behind the wall and we got to figure out many many ways that we can villager or zombie proof them and everything like that this could be a very very bad idea but I thought it would be a fun one. I figured we have all this space back here and that is dark right up there already. Anything up there? I figured we have all this space back here so we might as well try and do like a f some farm work with it. Oh my gosh, that is very dangerous. <laughs> Why did we choose this spot? No, no, don't, 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 no. Bad Mr. Creeper. But I figured back here would be a great spot to finally start using this underground area or quote underground area that we've been starting to develop. So why the heck not just start placing some torches down here, see what we can do to light it up a bit more, get a whole line of mobs here chasing us, run away from the creeper, run away from the creeper, and come up here, and it looks like I've already been stripping dirt out of this area too, so you know, we got a little bit of a, go ahead, oh, no, no, laggy, <laughs> I don't know why everything's lagging so much, run away, <laughs> this is a terrible idea. I really should have brought a bow or something, but you know, I thought this would be a great way to do it. But yeah, if we can come in here, clear this area out, we could easily turn this into a very easily protected villager farm because the design I'm looking at is actually basically like they're in a giant glass box. So I figured that could actually be pretty useful for us. And that creeper's gonna blow up, run away. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is not good at all. This is very laggy down here. Note to self, if you ever wanna work in this underground area, you gotta bring a lot of torches. It's very, very dangerous. Might have been more worthwhile to light it up with torches as we were building it. Hey, look, a carrot. We can start our farm now. Haha, -ha, definitely not worth it. Never light up any of your builds because you can get a carrot when you most need it. Hey, Whip, do you want to be a great idea? Light up half of the area and then leave and then come back. Because you know, no, they won't all spawn in that one dark area right over there next to the coal that you need to make more torches. Great thinking, dude. Great thinking. And with our great big brother, and he disappeared. I was gonna make a really funny joke right there. I guess he doesn't wanna be a part of it. That's fine. But up here, we should now be safe against everything except spiders because I've dug a trench around this entire area. So it's two blocks tall to get up into this entire platform besides a few little cheeky player movement spots that you can do like jump up on that block, then jump up to here. But we got a trench going all the way in. That's not, that's not very good trench work right there. Actually, no, I think it actually comes all the way down here. Yeah, no, that's actually supposed to be secured. That's, we're already good here. I definitely know exactly where everything is and I've 100% tested all of it. Definitely very, very secure. So basically we stretch across this entire area here. This whole upper platform I'm hoping is safe now from, like I said, everything except spiders. We'll see how well that works out. 
I'm not too sure exactly on what I want to be doing next in here as far as getting this stuff over. It probably should be building the base framework of the farm so that we can deposit some villagers in here safely and successfully. So let me get some work done. I think we're going to do some clearing work in here. We might be able to throw a lot more than just these two farms in here if we need them down the road. So let me get some work done. I'll be right back. All right, I've been doing quite a bit of work getting this next layer in here or getting this farm in here, I guess. The first layer is more or less placed down in here. Basically what we have is a giant flat dirt area here that we're gonna soon turn into farmland. Here we got a bit of a hopper line that simply brings itself all the way out to here. And what we're doing now is basically just coming in here and throwing in some hopper minecarts. Then what we've gotta do with these guys is just plop some dirt blocks down into them. And so we can do that by taking all the way up to here. And then I think if we jump down here, it might actually be easier. Then we can take some sticky pistons, bam and bam put our glass back in there and then if we power these sticky pistons they will well i'm apparently i don't know what i'm doing if we power these sticky pistons is that not what oh i forgot to get rid of the rails take two if we power these sticky pistons and we're good <laughs> so basically what that does there is that there's the oh that's a these are sticky pistons we do not want to be i didn't have regular pistons so we're using sticky ones that's basically what's happening now our hopper minecarts are in the blocks down there which is pretty freaking swanky and awesome and basically what that'll do is that if the farmer ever harvests these blocks it's automatically just going to pop off go into the hopper minecart and then come on out here and that's and there we have it all three layers are in we got carrots on the bottom potatoes in the middle and carrots again on the top. I think after the episode, I'm probably gonna make another one of these and just duplicate it and swap it from being potato, carrot, potato in the other one so that we can have both and get like three of each. It probably would have been better to do this full one as carrots or something like that, but I wanted both for now and I don't really have the time to be building everything up here. So we got a top layer in here with like a white concrete ceiling on it, which I think is looking pretty great. These blocks are in here for now. So as we bring in our villagers, they can plant around and this won't be that dark square block in the middle so that we don't have to worry about them like taking too long to be able to plant all the crops down. However, now it is time for me to go find some villagers, bring them over here. So let me get those guys over here. And there we go, three of them, all farmer villagers. He's got a good, he's got a decent carrot trade. We, he could our own emeralds. Do they both have the same trades? I think they do. Wow, that's actually pretty funny. And we got a potato trade over here, nice. So we gotta get these guys in on the different layers. Mr. Sheepy, I'm sorry, uh, but I need to get into the boat. And we're gonna take this guy just straight on down to the bottom. It really doesn't matter which one we put in where, as long as they all have their own layers. I don't know if we actually need the composters around them because that'll help them keep their job if we haven't traded with them yet. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and throw this guy in here. He is gonna be right there. And then if we just break this out, he should start going around and harvesting these carrots, moving them all over the place. Should. He's looking. He's looking. All right, here's slight change to what Silent Whisperer was doing in his video that I'm linking down below. We actually need to, in 1.14, include a bed, and then we also need our composter so he can have his workstation. So I added this little extra bit onto the side over here where we have a bed, a composter, and a light source to keep them all safe. And that's going all three. And this guy right here is slowly starting to plant them. I'll leave this one to sit for now. Let's jump back over to working on the wall designs themselves around the farmland so we can get some work over there too today. Back outside in our fresh Minecraft air with a bunch of blocks in our inventory now, we can finally start detailing out all this stuff. I'm getting some weird lag today. I don't know what's up with it. But I want to just quickly show you all kind of what we're going to be doing here for detailing this area out. And a lot of it is basically just going to be changing out the design that we already had in here. I don't have a whole lot of andesite to my name right now, unfortunately. So we might run into a few issues with this that stuff as we're going throughout. But we'll, we'll see how much we can get done today. And I think we should be able to get a lot of this stuff done. I would love to be able to also get a few of these fields actually planted, like full on planted. And now that we can use the half slabs for those blocks, oh my gosh, I freaking love this. They're gonna look so much better. Yeah, so it's basically that type, that's the type of plan that I wanna have going around literally everything here. So I'm gonna spend some time just getting this stuff, grinding away at it, getting everything in here, because it probably won't make too great of content if we walk through and do it all together. So I'll be back with you guys as soon as I have an update. For some reason, with messing around with the villager stuff so much and working on that carrot potato farm, I completely forgot that we threw two of them over in here everything else on that side is all done now but i came over here and i was like all right i got one more i got one more and then I'm like oh 
I got I got two more. Okay, back to do more. I'm running real, real low on the mossy cobblestone now, so I think we might need to... This is like I, I'm running on fumes in general in the world. Mossy cobblestone and andesite is running real, real low around everything, so we might need to actually start somehow figuring out to get a good vine farm going and then do some get, like resource gathering sessions to get some more andesite in here too. Does anybody know if there's like a best place to find andesite in the world, like a good height level for it? If so, can you let me know that down in the comments? Because I would love to be able to have like an easy, easy place to get it. Beyond just detailing out the surrounding areas of these walls and everything like that for our fields, I love to come in here and add a bit more extra life and variation to the outside by just adding in some flowers and some grass throughout here. It makes it the, these walls feel much older and much more like they're attached into this environment. Like they have vines and everything and grass growing up all over them. I think it really helps kind of set that tone and set that feeling of the farmland here has been here for freaking ever and it's super lush and very vibrant and there's a lot of things going on. Hey, look, a cornflower. And there's just so many different things happening in here. So especially like these areas throughout here, we want to make this like super lush and just things all over the freaking place. I do want to come back in with potentially some like oak leaf bushes as well and just kind of spamming things throughout this whole area. And we can throw a few big oak trees and things like that throughout here as well and just bring in a bunch more life throughout this area just to make it feel like, again, more alive and more attached into the environment, which I think is going to be something really good for ourselves and for the look of this area throughout and one thing i did want to talk about as it's been a major project that we've been working on in this entire episode is it's been probably a few hours since our last clip here because i've been messing around with that dang carrot and potato farm and it does not work i'm gonna leave all the footage in here for the video for that one because yeah it was kind of entertaining to be building it but i'm a little frustrated right now because none of it's working at all so you know that's that's super fun. It took about two, three hours to get everything in there set up and ready to go, and it just kind of doesn't work. So what we're going to be doing is, for now, for today's episode, we're going to try and get the sunflower field in here, a big wheat field in back there, and maybe fill up this one and that one with, like, wheat fields as well. Or maybe... Hmm. I don't know. I think we can get some stuff in here, but the plan is to get at least a few of these fields planted in here, everything like that ready to go and just kind of bring a bit more life to this vicinity than we currently have. So I'm going to get to work on detailing these things out throughout here, get everything in like this. We'll take a look at it and then we'll move into like planting everything, I guess. I don't even know if I have enough wheat seeds to do this, to be honest. We're back up here on our perch. And now we have flowers planted around everything around here, bone mealing the crap out of the area, and it looks so much better already. Just those simple changes like that make this area look a million times better. I love that we have the horse corral area here in the center, so it's not just going to be field, 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 field. We're actually going to have like a horse corral in here. I know, it's only going to be like field, 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 without the extra field on there. Uh, I still got to come over here and get all this stuff laid out on this area right here. I've been picking up a few flowers as we went around, and it's been really nice, but basically I'm just finishing up with this last little section here. Then we'll hopefully get like a wheat field planted in here, and I'll be back with y'all as soon as I can. I'm trying to be a nice little farmer, just go around and have some fun and do my own stuff here. These guys come out of freaking nowhere. I was just over here. <laughs> They're so dangerous. Oh my gosh, we need to find a cow too. Stat. Because our villagers are right over there. We're so... Oh, you're going to be dangerous. Oh, he could kill me. Come on. Use our elite PvP skills. And professional. There we go. Now we got to bring our bucket out and go find a cow. We only got hit by what? Five arrows? Took an arrow to the foot. We can still be an adventurer. I'd like to clarify on something real fast that people keep bringing up to me down uh, when I'm talking about things or when I'm working on farm projects. You don't actually need water to hydrate and grow crops. Or you need water to hydrate the farmland. But you do not need it to grow crops. So if we leave that there, eventually it will perish and dry up and turn back into dirt. However, if we are just placing seeds down right away while we're working through all these things, this will actually stay as farmland. The wheat will grow super, super slowly here. As you can see, that one turned back, but the rest of these are not turning back because they have a wheat seed placed on them. I don't remember quite when this change came in, but it was back in like 1.8, I believe, 1.9, something like that. So if you want to plant a massive, massive wheat field that's just going to be for looks and you don't care about how quickly it grows, you don't need to throw those water sources every four or five blocks so you can actually have that full, complete field 
instead of those random little patches where there's just like not a water source for one or two blocks. And by not a water source for every one or two blocks, I've definitely meant not an air gap. I gotta say, I absolutely love the new corn flowers. Just adding that touch of blue to all the different flowers that we get naturally spawning in these areas is so freaking perfect. In here, we have the last section that we need to fill in. And I am so happy to say that. This is the last area that we're gonna be tilling the earth out of here so this will be pretty much it for what we need to accomplish so that's one two three four and basically this is how i've been doing it for the tilled areas that we actually need to fill in is basically you can come throughout these and just hide and hide some water sources around i've been using our petrified oak slabs that we have as our core dirt blocks and using those to detail things out a bit further here as well so we can have that where it's basically the slab is on the upper half of the block which then if you bring that in here uh, you can waterlog those and it works out pretty freaking great so we're gonna fill in a few gaps right here around like this and i might have to grab one more and it's about to be nighttime so i'll get this done i'm gonna move forward with getting some fields planted we're mostly gonna be focusing on getting these carrot and potato fields in here i did run back over to my old storage room and found quite a few stacks of both of them so luckily we will be able to get a few fields planted in here even with our broken farm from earlier in the day so <laughs> That'll be a, that'll be just dandy here, and it's getting very, very dark. I do not like how dark this is right now. Just like shooting fish in a barrel. Look at this. We got another pillager raid coming through here, and these guys are just sitting there. Our farmland is also serving as protective walls for the villagers, but this area is pretty freaking epic, guys. This whole place is now filled in. This wheat field right back hidden back in here is still growing up. I don't really like the three being right there next to each other, but I think I'm willing to overlook that one because we got a lilac field right there. We got a potato field, carrot field, massive sunflower field, then another wheat field and another carrot field, I believe, over there. But let's take a look and see if we got any sweet loot from these pillagers down here real fast. Oh, we still got one more. Oh, ooh, now we don't. Haha, -ha, got him. I love this that we can actually get emeralds in like a decent way just by playing the game. We don't have to go farming for me or anything like that because I've Never really had any sort of a villager farm anywhere or emerald gathering source, so it's kind of fun being able to just get these really easily through doing all of this type of stuff. Uh, we do have that bad omen debuff though, so I am going to go find that cow again that we previously visited and a glass of milk to make everything better. All right, perfect. There we go. So this has been super fun. We have so many different fields in here. I absolutely love this area. There's quite a few things that I still want to come in here and touch, and that's what we're going to be focusing on in the next episode, and this comment kind of ties into that one. Patrick here is saying, I have always had problems with the surroundings. Any good tips there? As for a tutorial idea, have you thought ever thought about building some small military outposts or some board guard, like border guard posts? Uh, so the next episode is actually what we're going to be doing in regards to that first question. We're going to be talking about, oh, I don't want to break any farmland in here. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to detail the dead space. So like areas like this that we have throughout here, making those very lush, but not overpowering for the farmland regions, just so we can get a bunch more stuff going on in here. So we got like a dead space back in here. We got this little patch right here, which I absolutely love this pathway right here with a few flowers on each side. So we're going to be focusing largely on that type of stuff, bringing in a bunch of custom trees, and then just adding in a lot more life to this area and making it feel much, much more like the completed farmland that we have over here. This part right here, I absolutely love this space. We do have a dead spot right there that we can fill in as well. But if we come up here and land on the cliff right here, are we gonna make it? We're not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it. Okay, we did not make that. If we wander up through our hidden pathway right here that's not very hidden, we can <laughs> jump up here to the top and take a look at it more easily. I've not walked up this pathway, I think since we built it about a year ago now at this point. So that's pretty freaking crazy. But yeah, the farmland over here is just so much more completed than anything else. And I absolutely love that about it. There's so much detail, there's so many flowers, there's just so many things going on in this general vicinity. So I'd love to be able to bring a lot more detail into this region and make it much, much more completed than it currently is. And beyond that, as far as the like the border guard post type thing that they had mentioned, I've been thinking about right up in this vicinity, not on top of this guy right here, but on top of the, that little cliff face shelf right there, up in there, I've been thinking about adding like a guard post, like an outpost station for some like city guards who would be watching over the, the mountain pass that eventually is going to exist up here. I figure it's farther, far enough away from our Nordic village over here that it would still fit in pretty well. So I don't know, we'll, we'll probably get to that one eventually. I don't know the time frame for doing that, but that is on the plan. So anyways, 
that is gonna have to do it for today's episode. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down. It means a heck of a lot, so thank you all so much for that. The support recently has been absolutely insane. We recently broke 50,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for that. That is absolutely crazy to think about. On that point, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss out on what's coming here soon. Thank you all so much, Now I'll catch you on the flip side.